I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll tell you what I got here. I got a speedometer off of my uh, XV920. Now you can see on the left side it's missing a screw. The screw is inside. Also, the trip meter, although it adjusts, the only thing of the trip meter that works um, is the tenths. Um, these are these are a non-repairable, non-dismantleable uh, part. Uh, you know. Anyway, I have here. Uh, my father-in-law was a traveling kind uh, of a guy down in Reno, Nevada. And uh, I bought a bunch of tools. He's in a home now. He's got Alzheimer's. I bought a bunch of his tools off him. This happens to be a staple remover. It just happens to have a really fine, sharp point on it. I'm not going to use the thin part. I'm going to use the thicker part, but it's got a real point on it. Now, these are non-repairable. But I did one back in the 80s on a CB650. And it's different than this. I can't even remember what I did then. But this one here, I'm going to try to capture this on the film. I'm going to just lift this up. See, this ring is not glued on. It's pressed around here. So I'm going to take this inside part, which is hidden anyways, and I'm going to pry it out. And I'm going to see if I can uh, get it off of here. So if I pry it and pull it back a bit, it, it bends that metal. And I don't know if the camera... I can't watch the camera in this at the same time. I'm thinking you were seeing it. And I might struggle, but I thought I'd introduce it anyways, and I might, camera's kind of in my way. So I might pull it back, but that's what I'm doing here. I'm pulling up on that ring, and I'm trying to pull it back. So it's as, you know, not quite as flat as this. I just got to get it beveled up like this a little bit, so that I can push it over the edge and get inside of this speedometer. And then when I uh, get it back together, when I've fixed everything inside, then I'll just put a ring back on and I'll squish this back in together like that. So like I say, I'm just going to work at this slow. I'm probably going to turn the camera off because it's kind of in my room where my legs got to go. And uh, I don't think... There we go. My hand was in the way, wasn't it? There we go. We're going to do it like this. See, I'm just pulling back on that ring a bit. I'll show you later. I'll you turn know, the camera back off. here again, and I gotta we'll come back start on it. And I can't. See, I don't know if you can see on there, but once you got a when you got a piece of metal like this, if you're trying to, if you get a little bit bent up here, uh, you don't go too far away because you're bending fresh metal. What you do is we got a bend here, so we'll move over like in uh, metric speak. We'll go over like a millimeter or three. And, you, and it's already bent to the one side of it. So the other side's going to bend a whole lot easier where you're at. Sometimes when I'm working away, I don't know exactly what I'm saying. I know what I'm thinking. But as far as uh, instructional goes, see, I'm bending that. I don't know if you can... I'm going to see later when I stop it, but I'm bending it. Now what I need is I need... I don't need the whole ring bent out. What I need is I need about a third to a half. Probably a third is plenty. And you don't take too much at a time. You work your way. You do a little bit, eh? Metal's a funny thing. You just take a little at a time until you get it where you want it. It's a real slow process. You see, when I'm pushing down on here, I don't want to break that housing either. Because, uh, because these speedometers, you could pretty near say, are about as rare as hen's teeth, right? I mean, hen don't got teeth. But then other than this speedo, I don't know where I'm going to find another one ever. So I, I showed that part. I'm going to get this camera out of the way again. Well, there it is, boys and girls. I got it off. How about that? I don't know if I can get inside of there. 
because this adjuster is you know they I don't know how they get it on there but uh, that's not coming off but you know what the the, the least I'm going to be able to do is retighten this screw and I'm going to be able to jiggle this and get the screw out and then put this screw back in where it belongs. If nothing else, I get to do that. Um, I'd really like to see how, how this and this ties into this. It'd be really nice. Now I might be able to get this faceplate off. Maybe not, I don't know. I don't want to mess around with it too much anyways update in a second okay so I uh, got the speedometer face off finally it took forever you know watch this this um, trip meter is not working so uh, but it, it turns but it, it hangs up and, and this is just resetting it. Now, when this turns, it hangs up and it's this wheel that's causing a problem. It doesn't want to go through most of the time. Because it's close to the 6. It's always the 6, eh? So we'll do it slow and you can see that one hang up it slows it down everyone wants to go except for him and then he clicks and he kind of goes and then he hangs up between the six and seven and then he goes again we'll do that again slow turn evil equal pressure yeah I want to take it apart now there's a clip right here this this wheel is like I don't know what they did here but it's screwed on likely and you can't get you can never get those off apparently I'm in this and you're not supposed to be in here I think from the way they make it anyways there's this clip here I want to take that clip off I don't know what's gonna happen I want to get inside these inside these rollers because something is broken or something is not right in there because this shouldn't hang up like that and when you're riding the bike this this tenth meter goes around and it gets to where it has to change everything and it wants to see it wants to but oh and it did sometimes will sometimes won't there it is see it wants to and then it's tight and then it doesn't. Um, if I spin these ones, if I spin this one, if I spin this one past the nine, I think it turns the other one. Yes, it does. And it it turns it um, effortless, effort, <laughs> effortlessly, effortlessly. And this one, does the same thing effortlessly. So when that one turns, then go it goes to zeros effortlessly. This one when it gets on the six, it's always a problem. So I'm thinking there's something between here and here. Don't know, man. I'd like to know before I take it apart, but the thing is, it doesn't work. So if I screw it up, it's just going to continue to not work. <laughs> That's my theory. Anyway, I'll uh, see what happens. Okay, so I got the clip out. It took a whole lot of hefting to get it out. Here it is. I got it out, but it took a lot. And it's really flimsy. It's totally shimstock, and I hope I can get it back in. Anyways, so what I've done is I've taken these and I've separated them out of uh, because now they can move in that direction because the clip came out of here. I first move this one over a bit and then I move this one over a bit. You know, moved everything over a bit. So now what I get is it doesn't really 
it has those catch points because it's catching on something to, to do whatever it's doing. Um, but those ones aren't turning. They were turning when I first tried it. Put them all back together again. Right, fairly close. See, there's a little washer in there too. It has to go on this side of the clip. Now, and then we get to the sixes, and bang, it, it hooks again. So there's something. And I got loads of oil in here. I've just been, before I got the face off, I was pouring oil in. After I got the face off, I've been pouring oil in. I don't think I have any more oil left. There's this, uh, anyways, this for my water making equipment. Just lubrication oil. It hits that. So I'm still hitting at that six on that one. I'm still hitting. So I need to get everything over this way. Even if, I'd like to take this knob off. I'd like to take this whole working thing right out of here. So I can look at it a whole lot better. But we'll see how it goes here. So what I had to do here is I had to uh, had to go through the whole thing and then open it up all the way around. You know, just a little at a time in order to get this thing back on. gonna slide it got a fair amount of oil in there and I'm afraid that it's gonna there it's on now what I need to, uh, is I just need the world's smallest hammer or whatever I got and I'll just curl this all around I gotta go look for that hammer now never thought of it till now Okay, okay, okay. So it's not the world's smallest hammer, but it's the smallest hammer I've got. Might have started out as a jeweler's hammer. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push push it down on here, get it as tight as possible. Is if I was left handed. <laughs> Try this again. Here we go. Pressing down again as far as I can. Doing it on a notepad because the other side to oh we come around here oh yeah man I gotta deal with this now yeah okay So what I've done here is I've taken uh, these awesome little pliers I've got and I put tape on them so that I'm not going to damage the, uh, the front side here. I'll get the right angle here. There we go. I'm just going to stick this in there. Bend it a little bit at a time just like normal. Careful not to hit the glass out front. You can see it's kinking real nice. After I did the hammer, I might double check all my hammer work 
and do this as well to it. Just get it totally kinked over properly and flush. The camera's kind of in my way here, but I think you're getting the idea how nicely it works. And that tape is holding on pretty good. Just electrical tape. There, won't be long, I'll be able to put this back in. I didn't really get the odometer working um, at all. And I think maybe even I can adjust. <laughs> there we go, I caught. I'm just, and, and it doesn't seem to be too, it still catches on six, but you know what, not much. I got lots of oil in there, it stayed overnight. I'm just hoping that when I get back on the bike, the trip meter actually works because the trip meter is my fuel gauge. I know how far I can go and I don't want to be adding and subtracting up here. If I have to do that, then I'm either going to have to get waterproof sticky pads or <laughs> or a crayon that I can write on the tank. Um, because uh, even in my youth, my memory wasn't that great. So anyway, you know, when you're looking at scenery, who's looking at, who's remembering what the last mileage was anyways?